Hi guys, so today we're going to just quickly go over the practice math assessment. Frankly, I can't give you all the answers, nor will that really benefit you, but I want to give you some strategies to help you. These same problems, just different numbers, are going to be on the district math assessment. So this could be helpful. If you take a look at question number one, it's asking you about uh, greater than or less than. So you guys have probably all remember uh, that lesson about the alligator eating the larger number. Well, there are three pro problems, three questions that are going to have the correct number sentence. Um, understand Common Core will ask for sometimes for multiple correct answers. One of the things I would do is make sure you compare the same place value when looking at these decimals. So this is the tenths place, that is eight tenths. This is six tenths. Right off the bat, you know that eight tenths is greater than six tenths. So this would be a number sentence that applies. If you take a look at B, kind of tricky because they have three place values, tenths, hundreds, thousands. This has the tenths and the hundreds. In this case, when you compare the place values, tenths to tenths, it's the same number. You move to the next place value. Hundreds to hundreds, same digit. If you look, you now need to add a zero to the thousands place and four thousands is greater than zero thousands and that strategy of adding a zero to one of the place values to compare each place value to the corresponding numbers uh, is going to help you. So once again uh, making sure you're comparing place value to place value. It's just like the number 12 and 13. You're going to start with the 110 and you're going to compare it to the 110. And then you're going to move to the next place value. These are decimals, those are whole numbers. Question number two is also once again referring to place value. I like to think about money when thinking about uh, place value. This is a hundred dollar bill. This is a ten dollar bill. One dollar bills, dimes which are a tenth of a dollar, and then pennies. So we can kind of think of this as seven one hundred dollar bills is seven hundred, six ten dollar bills is sixty dollars, and then two one dollar bills. This is seven hundred and sixty two. This is a decimal because we are referring to parts. One tenth is going to be a dime. That's one tenth, and then five one hundredths is basically five pennies. And if we were to think of this number as money, it'd be seven hundred sixty sixty two dollars and. 15 cents. This is how we would write this. Once again, 762 and 15 hundredths. Question number three. In the number below, the underlying number is how much smaller than the number to its left? One of the things I want you guys to kind of understand, if we look at this number and we move from left, sorry, right to left. I'm used to reading left to right. But if we move in the opposite direction we read, every time you move to the next place value, it's getting 10 times larger. Okay? So you can see I am moving these to each place value. It's getting 10 times larger. So if they're comparing the underlying digit to the number to its left, um, basically, it's getting 10 times larger, or if we're moving to the right, it's getting 10 times smaller. So if I start in the in the thousands place and I move to the right, that's 10 times smaller. That's 100. And then I move to the right, that's 10 times smaller. That's the tens. And then if I move to the ones, that's 10 times smaller. So basically, depending on direction, either left or right, uh, it, it's going to be 10 times times smaller. When you think about that, you think about division. So I'm going to just write S for smaller, but you're dividing by 10. And then if you move to left, obviously numbers getting greater. The value is 10 times larger. So 10 times, I'm going to just go ahead and write larger, greater L. Okay. So let's go ahead and sneak up to problem number four. Look at the number and answer the question below. 923 represents nine one hundreds. Yes. Uh, the two and the three. What do they represent? Well, so basically thinking about place value. What is the value of the, uh, that two? What is the value of that three? If you look at the number 923, we know that these are ones tens and they already told you that nine is the hundreds place so basically what is the value of two tens it is 20 what is the value of three ones it's three and so you can see that um, a would be the the correct answer okay 
I'm moving down to five. Compare the two numbers below. Which is the following? Which of the following is true about the underlying numbers? I want to just point out there could be more than one correct answer. A lot of kids they'll find one correct answer. I don't know if A is the correct answer, and then they just move on. I would read all of the actual um, answers and make sure there's more than if 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 there is possibly two correct answers, you you read them all. So what are we comparing? We're comparing the hundreds. That's the hundreds place. Um, that's like a penny. And then this is the thousands place. Uh, what is true about these numbers? So once again, you heard me talk about um, the, the relationship of 10 times a number when moving to the left or 10 times, uh, 10 times smaller uh, when moving to the right, which would then be a one-tenth. So um, I'm actually not going to solve that problem. I kind of talked about it in a previous problem. Question number six, multiplying 67 and 43. Uh, one of the things that you guys may want to do is solve that because you can see that uh, this could be uh, the actual product of 67 times 43. So um, what you should do is multiply 67 times 43. Um, once again, you're going to multiply the ones times the ones. That's going to be 21. You're going to carry those two tens. And then 3 times 6 is 18 plus 2 is 20. A lot of the times, uh, students make the mistake. They don't put the 0 in the ones place because we're now starting with the tens. 4 tens times 7 ones. So that is 28. And then you have your 2 that uh, we used, but we're going to just go ahead and uh, we'll just use it again or write a new one. 4 times 6 is 24 plus the 2, 26. And then I add everything up. Um, once again, I would caution you. Uh, you uh, can see that uh, there could be a few different strategies uh, to uh, figure out this uh, answer. Uh, what you're doing is pretty much following the same strategy or algorithm, but you're using 39 times 58. So take a look and see if they all apply. When I see quite a few different multiple choice answers, usually one or two are going to apply. There's going to be more than one right answer. Uh, once again, find the product of 405 times 73. I'm not going to solve that out. I think you guys know how to do that. Uh, I would write it out. A lot of the times, students uh, forget that second zero uh, or that zero in the second add in. So don't forget that, okay? And then make sure you add everything up. Make sure you carry, carry everything. There are 60 seconds in one minute. Yes, there are 60 minutes in one hour. How many seconds are there in one hour? So uh, really very easy. 60 times 60 would help you to figure that out. And if you know that 6 times 6 is 36, all you have to do is add those two zeros and there's your answer. 534 times 38, we got that. 10 to the fourth power. Here's a little trick. So you're going to basically write the number 1 and then... 10 to the fourth power is basically four zeros. And as you can see, that is 10,000. Now you could do it this way. You could multiply 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, and that would equal 10 to the fourth. Okay, so uh, you don't forget, you will then have to multiply that by the number that they're identifying. Okay, and four times 10,000 uh, would be 40,000. So that is uh, exponents, uh, which of the following is correct. Um, you, you see four zeros, that's correct. Uh, this is six zeros, that's correct. Um, eight zeros, that's correct. Wow, uh, looks like they're all correct. This one is not. Ten to the seventh, it does not have six zeros. It's not one million. It would actually be ten million. And so you can see that um, problem number 11 has three correct answers. One is not correct. Question 12. Division. One of the things I want you guys to really think about is when you are dividing, you, you are basically thinking about a large number, which is the dividend. You can see 301 is the dividend. The 7 is the divisor. And basically, you're thinking about, okay, um, can I make a group of 7 with the number 3? You can't. So then you need to go to the next digit or in the next place value. And one of the things that a lot of kids forget is with division, if I have 30 objects, I'm making groups of seven. And and so the connection of multiplication to division. Seven goes into 30 four times. You can make four groups of seven, which is 28, and there would be two left over. 
Okay, and that's why we have a remainder of two. Pull down that next number. Now I'm kind of moving into the algorithm. I know that seven goes into 21 three times and therefore there would not be anything left over because 21 minus 21 is zero. So you can see they will be asking you the process. Um, you can look at my algorithm, think about all the practice that you've done with division to, to see um, what applies there. Uh, one of the things also I want to talk to you guys about, when checking your answer, you can multiply the divisor times the quotient, which will equal the dividend. That's a cool little strategy to check to make sure that you have done the division problem correctly. Once again, divisor, which is the 13, quotient 154. If you multiply these two circled numbers, it will equal 2032. If it doesn't, you've made a mistake somewhere in your calculation. Problem number 14. Word problems. One of the things I would do is reread this problem multiple times. Usually what I'll do is, is, is it, even as a teacher is I'll read it the first time and start thinking about where is that important information. Let me do that for you. Victor needs to pack up some books for storage. The table shows the weight of different types of books that Victor, Victor needs to pack. So you can see word problems will have numbers. Pay attention to those numbers. Okay, um, you can see that th this part of the problem also is important. So we have a lot of different numbers, um, but what we're doing is we're thinking about what we need to do with those numbers. He has a total weight of these three objects. You're going to have to add these up. And this is kind of a division problem. You're adding here, and then you basically you're thinking to yourself, how many times is 25 going to go into this combined weight? 67, 46, and I believe 65. That would be your dividend, okay? And you want to figure out the least number of boxes that are going to be used, okay? If you do get a remainder, you know that's an additional box. So um, what I would do uh, is... Think about division, or you know that uh, 7 times 25 is 175, and kind of figure out if this weight would be below the 175. So a few different ways of looking at that. Well, like you heard me talk about, uh, if there is a 1 and a certain number of zeros, that's going to be the exponent. So there are 6 zeros in a million, 10 to the 6th. There you go. You can count 6 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 10 to the 6 power. Place value. I would uh, take a look. You know this is the ones place. You know this is the tens place. This is the hundreds. So you're going to have to look for 5 times 100, 3 times 10, 2 times 1. Um, this is the tens place. So look for 8 times 1 tenth. Uh, we do not have any 100th. So you look for 0 times 1 to the 100th, or it may not even be there. And then this is the thousands plays. So they do try to trick you because that is three times um, one to the one hundredth, but that is that three is not one hundredth. That is actually one thousandth. So if this were a dollar amount, 532 and 80 cents, that three is the thousands place. So you can see where are we? Uh, I'm looking there it is. That's how you would represent a thousandths um, by using a fraction. Six and 37 thousandths in standard form. One of the things I want to kind of point out, the word and refers to a decimal. So the number six and, and then you can go ahead and write 37, the number 37, and then there are three place values when thinking of the thousands, tenths, hundreds, and thousands. We're almost there, you guys. Thank you for watching this 15-minute uh, video. Write the following number in standard form. So 648,000, okay, 207, and there we go. I see the word and. So what I would like to do is kind of think about of the whole numbers, what is being identified? 640, 648, so I wrote 648 in standard, 207. And it looks like all of those numbers have that. Now, um, we, we couldn't eliminate any uh, 302 thousandths. So just put that 302, because you know thousandths is three place values, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. And you can see that, well, looks like, um, unless I uh, made a mistake, it looks like, and this may be covering up the decimal, uh, it looks like they're both, uh, they're both being shown which is interesting.
300, 2000. So, okay, cool. Well, as, as you can see, sometimes um, multiple uh, common core problems have, you know, multiple uh, correct answers.